Hello, and welcome to my QTP video tutorial, where I will be showing you how to create a new function library. In this video, we'll be covering the following topics. First, what is a function library? Second, why create a function library? Third, what types or file types of function libraries can be created? Fourth, where can you save a function library? Fifth, how can you use a function library? And sixth, how do you create a new function library? And in that, I will show you how to create a .qfl file, a .vbs file, and a .txt file. As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. This now moves us to the first topic, which asks the question, what is a function library? You will commonly hear the phrase function library. Think, uh, think with me, if you will, for a moment about an actual library that has books, CDs, DVDs, newspapers, and other things. All that library is is a building that contains those items. A function library is simply a container for both functions and subprocedures. Now, just a quick disclaimer, throughout the rest of the video, I will just reference functions instead of both functions and subprocedures. But please know that they can both be kept in the same function libraries. You can keep both functions and subprocedures in the same file. This now moves us to the second topic, which asks the question, why create a function library? You will usually create a function library to group together similar functions. For example, you might create a function library to group web-related functions. This now moves us to the third topic, which asks the question, what types, or file types, of function libraries can be created? You have the option to create a new function library as a .qfl file, a .vbs file, or a .txt file. By default, QTP will automatically create your new function library as a .qfl file unless you tell it otherwise. If you would like for your function library to be in either a .vbs or .txt file format, you would simply type the name of the new function library you would like to create and then add the .vbs or .txt file extension onto the end of the name. For example, if you wanted to create a new function library and call it function library 1, but you wanted it to be in a VB script file, you would simply type in the name of function library 1.vbs. Or if you wanted that same function library 1 file to be as a text file, you could type in the name of function library 1 and then .txt. This now moves us to the fourth topic, which asks the question. Where can you save a function library? You can save a function library in lots of places. The most common options are to save it to your local machine, a network folder, or into Quality Center or ALM. The important thing to keep in mind is to make sure that the function library is accessible. While you're debugging the function library, it is fine to save it onto your local machine. Since you're the only one that's using it, it shouldn't make a difference. However, if you're not debugging the function library and it's actually ready for use, it would likely be better to store it where other machines could access it if other users were running tests that had a dependency on the function library. Meaning, if other tests were referencing functions that were in that library, you would want to make sure that it was in a place to where those tests could access it and not just saved off on your local machine where they might not be able to access it. This now moves us to the fifth topic, which asks the question, how can you use a function library? You can use a function that is in a function library the same way you would as if the function were directly in the script itself, assuming that the function library had already been associated with the test. A couple of advantages of storing functions in function libraries instead of keeping them in the script themselves are first, the scripts will appear cleaner since the bulk of the code will be in the separate function library and not in the script. And second, 
By placing the function in a function library, you can associate other tests to that same library, which means that you will now be able to extend the use of those functions outside of just that one test, meaning that other tests could then use functions that are within that same function library. This now moves us to the sixth topic, which asks the question, how do I create a new function library? I'll now flip over to QTP to show you the steps that you should take to create a new function library. I'll show you examples of creating the following types. First, a .qfl file, which again is the default that QTP will set you up with, a .vbs file, and a .txt file. Now to begin creating a new function library in QTP, there's a couple of different ways that you can get started. The first is by using the menu bar. The second is by using the button bar. They both get you to the same window, so it doesn't make a difference as to which you use. It could just be a personal preference. I'll begin by showing you how to use the menu bar. So look in the top left corner of the window and locate the file button. Click that. You'll then see a drop-down menu that will appear. You should see a new button. Hover your mouse over that. You would then see a new menu pop out to the right of that. There'll be several options, but you should locate the button that says Function Library. You could click that. However, now what I'm going to do is click off of this and show you how to use the button bar. To use the button bar, you should look up again in the top left corner of the window. And in my instance, I have what looks to be a yellow asterisk with a down arrow on the end of the button. You could click the down arrow at the end of the yellow asterisk to bring up its options. There will be several options, but one of the options that you can click is New Function Library. So I'll go ahead and click that now. You'll then be presented with a New Function Library window. You'll see along the left-hand side if your QTP instance is connected in a Quality Center, or ALM, your first option would likely be ALM Resources. You would then have an option for ALM Test Plan, then another option for File System. If you were looking to save your function library in ALM, you could click that button, the ALM Resources button, and that would take you to ALM, or Quality Center, and allow you to store it there. However, in this example, what I'll be illustrating is just how to save it off to our local machine. So if it was not already selected, you could click the File System button. You could then use the drop-down menu here at the top of the window to navigate through the folder structure on your computer to find where you would like to store your function library. And you would also do the same if you would click the ALM Resources button. You would navigate through the folder structure uh, to locate where you would like to store off your function library. Once you've picked the place where you would like to store off your function library, you should then look down to the bottom of the window. There'll be two inputs that we could possibly be interacting with. The first is file name. The second is files of top. Now, the files of top, you'll just leave as is. There's no need at all to change that. However, the file name we will need to uh, interact with. This is where you would type in the name of the function library that you would like to create. I'll just go ahead and leave this as library1, just as the default. Now, if I do not type in a file extension onto the end of the name, before clicking the Create button, QTP will automatically create this function library with a .qfl file extension. So I'll go ahead and click the Create button now to show you that. Once I do that, you'll now see that there'll be a tab up in the top left corner that says Library 1. That means that I have now successfully created my new function library that we call Library 1. At this point, I could type in any functions or sub-procedures I would like into that library, save it, and it's ready to be called. Now, let's go in and I'll show you how to create a function library as a VB script file. So again, you could use either the menu bar or the button bar to get to the new function library window. But I'll again use the button bar. Again, you should click to select where you wanted to store your function library, whether it was in Quality Center or ALM, or on your local machine. 
then pick this uh, folder that you would like to place that function library in. Once you've done that, again move down to the bottom of the window, look to the file name input, you can type in the name of the function library that you would like to create. I'll just use the default that they've created in for me as library2. But now in this example, since we want to create the function library as a VB script file, what I'll do is click into the file name input after the function library name. I'll then type dot VBS. After you've done that, you could again click the create button to create the new function library. You'll see that in the top left corner of my window, we now see the Library 2 button. That now means that we've successfully created our new function library as a .vbs file. I'll now show you the third way, which is to create a function library as a text file or a txt file. Again, you could take the same steps to arrive at the new function library window by either using the mini bar or the button bar. But again, I'll use the button bar. Again, you would have the option to click where to store it, either in Quality Center or ALM, or in your local machine. Then choose the folder where you would like to store it. Then move down to the file name input. Now, type in the name of the function library that you would like to create. I'll call ours library3. Now type dot txt to create a text function library file. Once you've done that, again click the create button. You can now see in the top left corner of my window that there's a library 3 tab. That means that the library 3 function library that we created as a .txt file has now been successfully created. Now at this point in any of those function libraries I could go ahead and enter any new function or sub procedure that I would like to create. Then after that, what I would need to do is go in and associate those function libraries with a test. So I could then call those functions from within a test. Now please watch one of my other videos where I'll go into more information on how to associate a function library into a test. This now concludes our video where I've covered the following topics. First, what is a function library? Second, why create a function library? Third, what types or file types of function libraries can be created? Fourth, where can you save a function library? Fifth, how can you use a function library? And sixth, how to create a new function library. And in that, I showed you how to create a .qfl file, a .vbs file, and a .txt file. As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. Thank you, and I hope that you have a great day.